So the reason it's important is this. The estate tax rate, top one, we'll review them, but is what? Anybody know what the top estate tax rate is? 40%. Used to be as high as 70. When I started to practice, it was 70. When Reagan, the exemption used to be $600,000. I remember between husband and wife, man, a million two? You can pass a million two free of estate taxes? Now the exemption's 5.435. You can actually pass 10.9 million free of estate taxes. But what's, what is happening, you can see, is the estate tax rate drops to 40%. Well, what's happening to the income capital gains, right? We're getting that 3.8%. Long-term capital gains are 20%. You figure in the state, I realize that, that uh, California is what, nine something percent when I lived there, which is one of the reasons I got, uh, uh, that I got lived there. But Las Vegas and Nevada doesn't have a state tax. They're two point four. Yes. So the, but, and so the point is though, but as the income rates really are approaching the estate tax rates, you have to do kind of a calculation. Is it better to get it out of my estate or is it better to go ahead and have a step up in the cost basis? All right. Uh, let's go on to that chart that I was talking about um, here. Uh, uh, yes. Can, can, can that, so Reagan had it at 1.2, now it's at 10.9. Can somebody next year, 10 years from now, take it back to 1.2? Absolutely. Absolutely. Always. It, it can be changed. So plan for um, so, so President Obama's thought had been, and, it, and here's the way that it went, the, the Republicans went ahead and said this, they were campaigning to say, we're going to go ahead and have no estate taxes. They succeeded in that. When did they succeed in that? 2010. You died 2010, George Steinbrenner, Yankees owner, he paid zero estate taxes. That was the year to die. Um, if we look at how the government raises money, the estate tax actually gets less than 1% revenue. It becomes a problem that politically that the rich are getting away with this, right? You read that, the rich are getting away with, but it doesn't generate a lot of money. It would not surprise me at some point if you could overcome the political argument that it becomes trade, there's a trade-off. Maybe the estate taxes are done away with, in exchange for something more on the income tax side, right? In exchange for something more. They would rather have the revenue now later, uh, but it's just to note that we don't raise a lot of money on the, on the estate tax side. So, so good question. Well, I'm wondering about in terms of planning. So yeah. you plan for right now, at, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be in that 10.9 million, <laughs> so I worry about it, or do you say, well, it could go down to one point, so I better worry about it. No, I, I, I think that, yeah, and, and that's always a good question. I, but my advice would be this. I think that you, you really plan as best that you can with the laws as they are now. Um, there hasn't been any pre precedent, by the way, for lowering the exemption. So kind of like a ratchet effect, once it's been ratcheted up, it's never been ratcheted back down. But Congress can do what Congress wants. Um, but. If it were me, and as I would advise clients, you know, let's pretend I'm having that exemption. And by the way, the exemption is supposed to be indexed for cost of living every year. So next year, and I'm right here on kind of the last tab, does everybody see, Jeff, you've got yours open. We see how the exemptions changed since 2013 to now, and that's where I was saying it's, uh, well, 5.45, 5.43 was actually last year. But you see the exemptions going up. Uh, the generation skipping, the gift tax, the estate tax. By the way, if I leave all my assets to my spouse, or my spouse leaves, leaves all her assets to me, what's the tax at the first death? Let's say, she, let's say my, my wife has a billion dollars, right? Pretty cool. And she leaves all bill, the whole billion to me in a simple will. I live everything to Charlie because he's a really cool dude. So he gets a million dollars, one billion. What's the estate tax? Zero. There's an unlimited marital deduction at first death. So when we think about it, a lot of times when I would sit with clients, I'm like, you're really doing a lot of this estate planning for your kids, right? Because the estate tax, if there is a taxable estate, is at the second death, not the first death. We rarely see 
prince will have an estate tax. Why? He wasn't married. Okay, but if you're married and your spouse figures in there prominently, uh, there's typically not an estate tax. But I wanted to give you an idea of the rates we talked about, 40%. The exemption, we see that being increased. Um, um, and we'll keep going, I'm mindful of time. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, asset protection. I think that's kind of important, particularly whenever I talk to doctor groups. <laughs> it's like asset protection. I think. Best line of protection, number one out of the gate, is property casualty insurance. So I don't know if people have had a property casualty review, if people have a necessary umbrella, right? That's the number one defense. Second, uh, in addition to that, is making sure that you own businesses, real estate or whatever, typically in separate entities. So sometimes I'll say this, that people will have six different entities, you know, real estate, businesses or whatever, and it's all under Acme Inc. And I'll say, well, all right, you own all these entities in one, that makes it easier, all the entities are in, in one thing, but what happens if that business gets sued and the property casualty or what have you, the insurance isn't enough and it exceeds it, isn't it the case that all the other businesses in that entity are fair game to be able to attach? So if you think about it, you would want to, and typically the LLC is the entity of choice these days. It used to be when I started out, it was the C Corporation and then the S Corporation, but likely the, the LLC uh, is, is, is probably the entity of choice that if I have real estate, I can own each property if I'm concerned about asset protection and putting it in, a, in an LLC. Yes? So a while back, uh, maybe 10, 15 years, I don't remember, uh -huh. when we were going to form 15 LLCs, I really questioned my attorney about it. He said, well, an LLC can actually be pierced. He said something along the lines of, you know, people are going to see it and they're probably going to stay away from you but it can, it's pierceable. Has that changed? Is, is that yeah. a different story I, I don't really agree. Corporations. Yeah, I don't really agree with that. I guess everybody has an opinion, but just like an S corporation, a C corporation, an LLC, as long as two things, it's set up properly, so the formalities are done properly, and it's adequately capitalized. You put in enough capital at the time um, so if I set up a company, right, I set up an S corporation and I threw in uh, $50, now there's a concern of, of piercing the corporate veil because there was not enough capital in there to begin with. But if I put a check in there for $5,000, for $10,000, well, now there's enough. So I, I, I do think that an LLC is on par with the other entities. It hasn't been around long enough, but it should provide asset protection. I really wouldn't worry about it that way. Um, other things that come to mind in terms of trusts, uh, well, first off, Las Vegas is a self-settled asset protection type of state. That's one of the things out here to note. So you can go ahead if you wanted to set up not a revocable trust, but an irrevocable trust. Um, you know, you, you can have it where you can be a potential beneficiary of that trust. Now you need, and if you're not a Las Vegas, Nevada resident, you need a trustee here, so the trust is cited here, um, but can help in asset protection. One of the things that when people hear about this asset protection and they set up trust, I say this, and it's an important principle, only put really rainy day money, rainy day assets in an asset protection trust. Do not put in the whole kit and caboodle that you know you're gonna need to, for your life to spend. Don't put that into the asset protection trust. And if anything, that can defeat an asset protection trust if you put everything in there and then you need to start taking it right back out. So having an irrevocable asset protection trust, I'll give you a simple example of one. And you know, I, I put an article that I did in here, but uh, would be this. This would be one trust I would consider, perhaps. Uh, if I had a taxable estate, I got a big windfall coming in here. This is a great liquidity event. Um, and I can set up what's called a spousal lifetime access trust, SLAT, we call them SLAT. So it would be this, Charlie goes ahead, gets the money. Charlie's a physician worried about getting sued. So I set up an irrevocable trust. My wife is the trustee and she's also a beneficiary along with the children. I put the money in the irrevocable trust, Charlie's out of it. 
right? Because I, I put it in there. If somebody sues me, I don't have the money because it's in the irrevocable trust. My wife's the trustee and she's a beneficiary right along with the kids. Um, now, the advantage is if Charlie needs the money back, right, in the marriage, my wife can distribute out to herself and we're one economic unit. And, you know, so then I can get the money back. It won't be part of my estate, right? And I get a large degree of asset and creditor protection with that type of trust. Some downsides with that, my wife and I get a divorce. Well, I just put the money in the trust there. Now she could drop out as a beneficiary and a trustee, that's in the document, but the problem is I may have lost, unless there's a trust protector, but I've probably lost just for a general rule, I've lost access to the money indirectly, right? I had indirect access before, um, so divorce if my wife dies, but that's very popular. It's probably the first thing people look at in asset protection is, do I want to set up a, a spousal access uh, trust? Um, I have material in here on, on different types of planning, trust, legacy trust that's more meaty, more in depth to go through. But I wanted to, in the next you know, five, 10 minutes that, and, and close out with this, I wanted to talk about a team. Uh, and that's the, I think the last tab, yeah, tab number five. Wanted to talk about the team. Because I think one thing is important, it's more than just one individual. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm really convinced no one individual can do it all. Uh, they can't. You know, kind of the, 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 remember the doctor years ago, I don't know, when I was sick as a kid, I, you know, the doctor would come and bring the black bag to the home and all of that, and that was like super cool. But today, it's really an area of specialization. Jeff, to your point, when I look at a team, um, and I listed some people here uh, on this slide. I listed some folks. So if I were looking at a team, you don't have to have all these people, but key players would be an attorney. Well, I just don't want to hire any attorney. I don't want to just say, well, my person's a good friend and they do a little lit litigation and then they do a little contract work and they do a little PI work. I probably want someone who's an estate planning specialist. Maybe who has, if I'm concerned about taxes and LLM and taxation, you have a, a degree in, in taxation. Um, I might want someone that's an ACTEC member, the American Trust, um, really college, uh, where professionals will go to. But I want someone who's experienced and that's their area of, of per I was a business tax estate planning attorney. That's what I did. I didn't do litigation, this, that. You probably want an investment advisor. So I've got an attorney and an investment advisor. Uh, what about an insurance agent? You know, a lot of times people don't think about insurance as being an asset. When I have, you know, when we have kids, I still have uh, a 12-year-old daughter. I think that when I retire, I'll be about 90, I think, as I've calculated it out. Um, but if you have term insurance, we don't think about term as an asset. It has no value. Well, wait a minute. If I have a $5 million term policy and I die, if it's in my name, that $5 million is part of my taxable estate. Sometimes it's better to own the insurance in an irrevocable trust to get the insurance out of the estate, but um, the accountant, CPA, I think, uh, well, you're gonna talk a little bit more about that. A planner, I'm a CFP, financial planner. Maybe there's a trust officer, right? There could be a trust officer, maybe a philanthropic person. But the diagram here and, and, and the national board that I'm on in estate planning, we really talk about this, is having your team be collaborative. Um, you ever have that in your practice? I have it in my marriage sometimes. I think I said this, I didn't coordinate with that, right? Uh, advisors are siloed, somebody's running this way, but they didn't let someone know that, right? I mean, so many problems in life are due to communication, period, right? Whether marriage, business, or whatever. So I'm a real believer in that in this collaborative of communication, cooperation, and coordination, that the collaboration, <laughs> the synergy, is right in, in the middle of that. So, I, you know, number one, I believe in a team, and that's a team. Number two, just a glance here, you know, how am I set up? What do we do? We, we function as a team, so do you function as a team? Yeah, we, we have a client, and then we say we don't replace your attorney, we don't replace your accountant, we work in conjunction with them at Wells. I typically am the relationship manager, so I'm a point of contact, right? I'm kind of a little bit of a concierge 
uh, making sure we're bringing in the right specialists at the right time. Depending upon, I think this is important, um, really is what is important to the client. My job is to help people make clear and committed financial decisions to take action. I am convinced that every one of us in here, starting with me, has a financial junk drawer somewhere in their life. If I checked your wills, even though you said you have that, I would bet <coughs> over half of them are semi-delinquent. I could find something in your wills, in your estate plan, that if I said, were you aware that that was going to happen? Might you consider that? You know, people say they have it done, and what I tell them, you have paper. You find out if it really worked the way you wanted it to work, not you, but when you die, right? Is that not true? Until that time, you just have some paper. So I know my will, if you'd say, Charlie, well, is your will up to date as it should be? No. No, I did it when I adopted our daughter. I said my daughter's 12. Uh, we did it at one. It's okay, it's pretty good, but I probably could do some more things. General rule of thumb, you wanna update your will every five to seven years, unless there's a change in <coughs> tax law. Well, there's been a couple changes in tax law. If you have an AB trust, anybody heard of an AB trust when they will, AB will, there was a, the exemption 600,000 or a million dollars. It had a tax planning trust in there. If you've not had your estate documents looked at, this would be a life event, right? A liquidity event that one of the things I would say is please get it reviewed. This is a good time to go ahead, get it reviewed, make sure that it works as you want it to work. So at Wells, we go ahead, and I'm, I'm in a generalist role, although obviously I, I enjoy talking about and spend a lot of time on tax business fiduciary issues, so I, I like to bring that to the table. But we may work with a credit specialist, a private banker. We may work with a trust fiduciary specialist, a financial advisor, a wealth planner. So my point is, I think having a team more than any one individual, who mentioned a quarterback? Someone mentioned, was that, you mentioned a quarterback? Um, that may be good. Sometimes we use the word um, quarterback, but maybe a facilitator. Someone who says, you know, I'm gonna run point. I'm really close to the client and I wanna make sure that we're all collaborating, that we're working together. Who's a facilitator on your team? Are you having annual meetings? Should you have an annual meeting? People are really sideloaded in this profession. Um, I guess I will close with this on, on the estate planning side. Um, estate planning, I guess, is this. You know, it takes a lifetime to build an estate, does it not? We acquire it piecemeal. You know, we kind of build it up. And, and there's a saying poem that goes like this. I saw a group of men tearing a building down, a group of men in my hometown. With a heave and a hoe and a mighty yell, he swung a beam and the sidewall fell. And I asked the foreman, you know, are these guys skilled? The type you'd hire if you wanted to build? And he laughed and said, why no indeed. Common labor is all I need, for I can tear down in a day or two what it took a builder a lifetime to do. I'll end with Prince. All of the work, the effort, the time to build this, to retain rights, to do that, if you didn't take the time to put in a basic essential estate plan, that can be torn down rather quickly. Estate taxes, family fighting, this, that, the other. So um, this isn't your whole financial plan as you were done. This is just an important part of it. So I'll be here to, to answer questions, but thank you all for your time. Thank you. I have one question. Yes, sir. What would my, could you resummarize really quickly? When you would recommend having, a well, situation would you recommend having an irrevocable trust? Yeah. Um, there was that there. If, if my estate is including life insurance, including life insurance, if I'm over the 10 million. Okay. If I'm spouse. approaching it, you know, if I'm approaching and it looks like things are really appreciating, then I would look at that. Over five million if you're single. Like That's correct. Okay. Yeah. If you're not, cool. Okay. I don't think, you, I, don't, I don't really think you need one. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Sure.